Hello friends, this video on why do we fall ill part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So, some time back I was talking about that this infectious diseases, they spread from one person to another. How do they spread? Because the bacteria or the microorganisms which cause these diseases, they get transferred from one person to another. Now, how do they get transferred from one person to another? There are very ways by which they are spread from one person to another and these different ways are known as means of spread. So now we will be talking about the various ways by which the infection can spread. So ways by which infection can spread from one person to another is known as means of spread. So here we will talk about the various ways by which the infection can actually spread. So some of them are air, water, direct and indirect contact, sexual contact and vectors. So these are some of the medium through which the infection can spread. It can spread through air or water or direct contact with the uh, infected person, indirect contact with this infected person, sexual contact with the infected person as well as through vectors. So what are, you might be wondering what are vectors in biology because you would have studied about vectors in physics maybe but not in biology. So we will talk about each of these one by one in the next slide. Okay, so let us first talk about air. So how infection spreads through air. Now droplets thrown by an infected person during coughing or sneezing, where do those droplets go? You would have seen that when you sneeze, what happens? Small droplets of water comes out of your mouth. So where do those droplets go? They remain suspended in air. Now, if there is some other person who is sitting very near to you, he will inhale. So when he inhale, sometimes those droplets of water which are present in the air might get inside his body through his nose, right? So that is how that person might get infected, right? So if you look at this picture, you will get an idea how badly when a person coughs or sneezes, the infection spreads all around in the air. So here you can see that this person is sneezing and there are some small droplets, some bigger droplets. So what happens to the bigger droplets? The bigger droplets settle to the ground in a few seconds because since they are heavier, so they generally tend to fall back immediately. The smaller droplets, they evaporate to droplet nuclei in this zone. So there are some small droplets who will remain suspended in air. There are still some droplets who would be which will be carried in air and they will fall somewhere around at a distance of four meters from where the person is standing. So that means in the vicinity of an infected person, there is a huge scope of another person getting infected because those uh, small droplets which come because when we generally suffer from some diseases like common cold we we tend to sneeze or cough very often so every time we sneeze or cough we are actually suspending those infected droplets in the air all around us so people coming in that area might get infected right so that is why we have observed that when we sit near someone with common cold, we tend to catch cold. Like suppose if you spend a lot of time with somebody who is having cold, you also tend to get that cold because these droplets carry the microbes which can enter our body and cause infection. So some of the examples are common cold, pneumonia, tuberculosis. If, if you look at it in all these diseases, that patient has a tendency to cough, sneeze or I mean, if you have cold, you will see that some uh, watery fluid will come out of your nose. So everything will carry the infection, right? Now the next means of spread is water. So how does uh, infection spread through water? Now excreta of infected person sometimes might get mixed with the drinking water and if somebody consumes that drinking water that person might also get infected. So in this case I mean it, it, uh, it feels so yucky when you read this that excreta of some person is getting mixed with your drinking water. So this will happen only when you are not very sure if the water which you are drinking is clean and safe enough. Right? So that is why it is always advised that you can, you can either use aqua guard in order to purify the water or you can even use the water filters or sometimes you can even boil the water and make it 
good enough and safe to be drunk right because it it often happens that there may be in some slum area so people excrete and those excreta is gone and thrown away somewhere now where you are throwing that maybe that area is from where your drinking water supply comes right so if there is a possibility that your water gets mixed with excreta of infected person so the water is actually carrying those microbes and when you drink that water the microbes enter your body one examples of diseases which are caused through water are cholera typhoid hepatitis because all these diseases occur when you drink unclean water so how will microbes come into water it comes from some infected persons only right so these diseases are known as water borne diseases and the diseases which are caused by air are known as air borne diseases so they are often known as air borne diseases and these are known as water borne diseases right so in order to uh, prevent the diseases like cholera typhoid and hepatitis a you should ensure that the drinking water supplies are safe and clean the next one is direct and indirect contact so what do we mean by direct and indirect contact now if a healthy person stays in contact with the infected person so in contact you can be in direct contact with the person how by handshakes or by touching that person or by kissing that person these are some of the means by which you are in direct touch or direct contact of the infected person and there is a possibility that the microbes can get transferred from the infected person to the healthy person or what do we mean by indirect contact indirect contact means you are not touching that person directly but you are touching the things which are used by the infected person maybe the the shirt which was worn by the infected person you go and wear the same shirt or maybe the infected person uh drank water in a glass and you are using the same glass to drink water right so by using things which are used by the infected person so that is known as indirect contact so there are many such diseases which get spread by this means for example ringworm conjunctivitis head lice and skin infections so head lice is one common example which all of you must be aware of you would have seen that mostly it mostly happens with girls because they have long hair right so when you get lice in your hair how do you feel you always feel like uh, feel like scrubbing your head you feel irritation in your head right and now let us suppose if there is a girl who has lice in on her hair now if you stay in touch with that person there is a possibility that the lice can come from her body to your body and then it can climb up to your hair and that is how you get lice in your hair right so it is either by direct contact maybe you touched her hair and you got the lice or maybe uh, you wore a jacket which she was wearing and that jacket had a lice and then when you wore that jacket maybe the lice climbed up to your hair so that is how you can get lice similarly conjunctivitis what is conjunctivitis it is a kind of infection in your eye so what happens the eye becomes red it swells up and there is continuously water flows out of the eye and there is a kind of itching in your eye so people say that uh, if you touch that uh, the, a person is i who is having conjunctivitis you also tend to get conjunctivitis and it actually happens that is why we often see that those who are suffering from conjunctivitis they generally wear a black glass so that the conjunctivitis is not visible and it does not spread to other people right similarly ringworm and other skin infections because something which is on the skin if you touch your skin with the skin of the infected person you might get those kind of infections also so by directly touching uh, an infected person or by using the things used by the infected person you tend to get some kind of infections the next one is sexual contact as i mentioned before also sex is something which is which brings lot of intimation between two persons and there can be lot of transfer of uh, microbes during the process so sexual act with an infected person can actually infect a healthy person so examples of such diseases are aids and syphilis as i mentioned before also aids is not only now another thing to be noted here is aids spreads 
through sexual contact but it does not spread through casual contact that means if you touch if there is a person who is uh, suffering from aids if you touch that person or if you handshake with that person or if uh, you wear a jacket which is worn by that person aids will not happen to you that's because aids spreads only through sexual contact and not through direct and indirect contact in some small villages and towns people often have this myth that if somebody is suffering from aids just isolate him from the society completely do not talk to him do not keep any relation with him but it is not like that it should not happen like that you should not isolate a person that way just because he is suffering from a disease because it will it will infect you only when you have sexual contact with that person by touching him or by going close to him you will not get that disease right so aids and syphilis are some diseases which uh, are transmitted through sex and also aids can also get transmitted through blood to blood transfusion which often happens if uh, injections are um, are not used properly and also there is another possibility that when a, a lady who is suffering from aids is pregnant so there is a possibility that the virus can get transmitted to the newborn baby Right? So these are some of the ways by which AIDS get transmitted. The last one is vectors. So what are vectors? This term is very common in physics. But in biology, sometimes people think what are vectors? So now insects or animals which act as carrier of infection from infected to healthy person. So now this infection, as I said, the infection can go can transfer from uh, infected to healthy person by air, water, direct or indirect contact, sexual contact. Similarly, it can also happen that there are some carriers, some insects or animals carry that infection from the infected person to the healthy person. The most common and the best example is mosquito. Mosquito act as a vector and it causes deadly diseases like malaria, dengue and chikungunya. What does the mosquito do? The mosquito, I mean, it sucks blood from the body of people, right? So now it can go and suck blood from an infected person. So what happened? That blood will have those infection, it will have those microbes. Now when it goes back and again sucks blood from a healthy person, those microbes can get transmitted to the healthy person. So that is why mosquito act as a carrier of infection. It carries infection from an infected person to a healthy person and cause these deadly diseases. Another example is dog. Dog himself, The dog itself act as a carrier of infection. You would have heard of a disease called rabies which often happens due to dog bite. So when a dog bites a, a person, sometimes what happens is the virus which causes this rabies gets transmitted from the dog to the body of that person. And as a result, the body, that person gets infected with rabies. Right? So in this case, dog no, does not only acts as a vector, dog actually is the carrier of that infection. Dog himself has that uh, virus, just that when he bites a person, he transfers that per uh, virus to that person. So that is why dog is often considered as a rabid animal, because it causes this disease, rabies. Right? So you would have seen that people who have pet dogs at their homes, they often will uh, give them that injection so that when if that dog bites somebody, it does not cause rabies. Right? Okay, so these are some of the ways by which the infectious disease can spread from an infected person to a healthy person. So keeping in mind all the diseases, I mean what kind of disease a person is suffering from, we should take proper precaution. If a person is suffering from an infectious disease which can spread by direct or indirect contact, we should try to avoid those kind of contact with that person. If that person is suffering from something which, which will not uh, be transmitted through direct contact, in that case we can, in that case it is not needed to isolate that person. Right? So these are some of the means of spread of infectious disease. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.